Hi, I'm Valerie and welcome to my new tutorial. Today you will create a beautiful 3D scene in After Effects, but note that this tutorial is relevant only for those using After Effects versions 24 and above. So in this tutorial we will focus on how to improve the look of a 3D scene that we will create using a real 3D objects. You will learn how to create very smooth highlights as you can see here and smooth shadows like in these areas because the default lighting in a 3D scene created with the new 3D features in After Effects may look not so good so today we will learn how to make it look much better we will also create a nice color correction filter we will learn how to create an environment lighting and create a delicate camera zoom in animation of course we will also learn how to import static and animated 3d objects into after effects so i hope you are ready for this one because you will learn a lot of new tricks today so let's get started Alright, so first let's create a new full HD composition real quick. Make sure to set the frame rate to 24 and the duration to 10 seconds. For the background you can leave it in black. Now let's head over the 3D renderer and make sure to change it to advanced 3D. Note that you will see this option only on the 24 version of After Effects and above. And before we are moving on do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video because you will learn some cool things along the way. Ok, so now let's start by downloading the assets we will use in the project. This time we will use Sketchfab. To find the flower, I just search for a flower in the search bar and then I choose the free standard license objects. And after that I search for animated ones because I wanted to show you how to use animated files in the new After Effects uh, 3D features. Here we have a beautiful render created by a 3D artist named uh, Zach. A big thanks uh, to him for sharing this file with the world. Now let's click on download and take a look at the options. To use it in After Effects we need to download either the GLTF or the JLB files. The difference is that the JLB file comes uh, as one file with the texture files emerged, while the GLTF files come with another folder containing the texture files. I prefer to download the GLTF file because sometimes maybe I want to make some changes to the textures. Alright, so I will enter the folder I created for this project and then I create another folder named assets to save the, all the assets I'll use in the project here. Now let's find a nice table to put the flower on. To do this I'll uncheck the animated filter and then search for a table in the search bar. Uh, we can use the one from uh, Nick Gon. it looks like a nice and simple one exactly what we need for the example in this tutorial as with the previous one let's download the gltf file and save it in the assets folder we just created all right so once we have all the assets we can start bringing them into the project to do this let's open the project folder and enter the assets folder to extract the 3d objects we downloaded We can delete the zip files now. Now let's start creating the scene. By the way, here are the textures files that uh, you can adjust in Photoshop if you want to change the colors or small stuff like this. Alright, so let's drag the GLTF files into the project panel in After Effects. Now open the folder we have here and drag the GLTF file into our composition like this. You will see a pop-up in which you can scale up your 3D object if uh, you need to. Just make sure to check the preview box to see what you are doing. 
In our case, we are good with the size, so let's just hit OK. Before uh, moving things around, let's start by adjusting the anchor point of this layer so we can uh, more easily adjust its position. To make it as precise as possible, we can switch to the front view from here. Now let's select the anchor point tool and drag the anchor point to the bottom of this layer. Now let's see the scene from the top view to make sure the anchor point is centered on the layer. Now we can go back to the active camera view, select the selection tool and drag the layer up a bit. And before bringing the table, let's change the name of the folder in the project panel to flower and the, the name of the layer in the composition panel to flower as well. Great, and now let's bring the table to this scene. Let's just change the name of the folder and the name of the layer for more convenience. Alright, and now uh, first let's drag the table down here and then let's bring the flower up here so it will be placed on the top of the table and to work more precisely we can switch to the front view once again and then place the flower in the correct position something like this cool next to enhance the design we should create a new camera in this scene so right click here go to new and choose camera let's use the one note camera this time and select a wide camera lens for a more realistic angle in the 3D scene. Alright, and now it's a great time to save the project, to save everything we've done so far. So let's go to file and click on save. Then go ahead uh, to the folder of this project and create a new folder called AE. In this folder, uh, let's save our project and we can change the name to 3D Steam. Next, let's select the camera and press P to open up the position property. Now, let's move the camera to get a nice angle. You can drag the values while holding Shift and it will make the camera move in a bigger increments. Great, I will place the camera somewhere around here so it will look like the table is on the right side of the scene. Great. Once we are good with the camera angle, let's deal with the animation of the flower. Because as you can see right now, there is no animation. To activate the animation of this layer, we need to open it. Then go to animation options. And here, choose the name of the animation we have on this layer, which is in our case called scene. And now, if we move the time indicator, we will see the animation of this layer. It looks very nice, uh, but the problem is that the animation ends after uh, one second. And here is a quick tip for you, if you want to continue seeing the animated layer after it finishes its animation, all you need to do is right click on it go to time and enable the time remapping this way we will convert the start and the end of the time of this animation into keyframes and it will allow us to expand the layer and continue seeing the final frame of this animation moreover we can drag the last keyframe which represents the end of the animation to the right and by doing that we will slow down the entire animation as now the animation lasts uh, four seconds instead of one second all right and now let's press r to rotate this layer so we can see the flower when it opens i think it looks good uh, all right and now let's start improving the look of the scene and the objects we have here because as you can see right now everything looks super flat without shadows lighting points or highlights so first let's create a new environment for this scene we can do it by right click go to new and select light now switch the light type to environment and make sure to check the cast shadow option to get nice shadows in the scene you should see some shadows already 
The next step is to choose the environment for the scene by downloading an HDRI file. You can use websites like uh, Polyheaven like we are using right now where you can find a great free HDRI presets. In this case I want to find an environment with some uh, nice uh, studio lightning. So this one looks nice and now I make sure it's in uh, 4K resolution and I click to download the file. I'll save it in the assets folder and now let's bring this file into the project and see how to use it. So first let's drag it to the scene and place it below all the layers. So now to get the lighting of the studio we need to open the light options of the environment light layer we created and in the source uh, change it to the HDRI file we have in the scene. Now as you can see we have some nice highlights in the scene along with better shadows. Don't worry about the dots we have here in the shadow areas, we will deal with it in a moment. For now let's create another light layer, but this time let's choose the point light and then change the color of the light to a nice bright yellow. Then make sure uh, the intensity is at uh, 100%, fall off is set to uh, smooth and hit OK. To place this uh, light in the best position we can use the top view to see where to place it in the scene according to the objects we have here. So I'll place it somewhere around here, I think it looks great. So now we will already have better lightning in the scene as you can see. Uh, and if you don't get the same shadows as mine, please open the 3D objects you have in the scene and enter the composition options uh, to ensure that uh, casting and accepting shadows are turned on for all the 3D uh, layers you have here. So open it in the second layer as well and check it out. Now let's learn how to deal with the noisy shadow areas in the scene, such as this area of the table. Uh, it's super easy, all we need to do is go to the composition settings. So let's press Ctrl K or Command K on Mac uh, shortcut and go to the 3D renderer. Now click on options and here is where the magic happens. First make sure the preview is checked so we can see what we are doing. Now increase the render quality for a better look. Keep in mind that the higher the number, the harder it will be for your computer to preview or render the scene. So you should test different options to see which fits best with your computer's power. And to further improve the look, we can double the resolution here and increase the smoothness as well as the render quality. And once you are satisfied with the results, just press OK. Alright, I think the scene looks great and now I'm ready to animate it. Let's animate the camera together and create a nice zoom in animation. So first uh, select the camera and press P to see the position property. Now head over the beginning of the timeline and create the first keyframe with the current value. Next go to second uh, let's say 8 and let's adjust the values of the position axis to create a smooth zoom in animation. Now let's see how that looks. To speed up the preview I set the preview quality here to third and you can also go to the preview tab which you can find in the windows a menu and now set the preview to skip a uh, two frames this way after effects will preview the scene faster by skipping two frames during the rendering or the previewing so first let's give the scene a few seconds to render and then preview it in uh, once again to check the zoom animation we created Ok, I think it looks great, now let's create a text layer and use the opacity to create a fade in animation for it. 
not something uh, complicated very simple animation so let's make it uh, very quick uh, I want the text to enter the scene after the flower is opened which is around the fourth uh, second so I'll drag the layer here great and now let's create a new solid in the scene to use it as a background Next, let's search for the gradient ramp effect and add it to the solid we just created. And to get a nice gradient, let's set the shape to radial and switch the colors. Now drag the brighter point to the bottom area of the scene and move the dark point to somewhere above. Something like that. And for a smooth gradient, make sure to set the ramp scatter to at least 50. And for the brighter color, let's sample the bright brown color from this area. If it looks too dark, we can lighten it up. We can use this brown color for the dark part of the gradient. And then choose a bright and brown or yellow color for the bright part, something like this. We can darken the dark uh, gradient color even more, I think. Yeah, it looks better. All right, the scene looks awesome. Let's uh, bring the preview quality back to full to see how it looks. It looks very good, but we can make it uh, even better. And we can do it by creating a new adjustment layer and apply different color correction effects on it. So first, let's add the hue and saturation effect. Uh, let's change the name of this layer to color correction real quick. And now set the saturation level uh, to let's say 15. Next, we'll add the curves effect and adjust the RGB colors accordingly. I think uh, lowering the saturation level to 10 will be good. Yes, and finally we can use the sharpen effect. And let's set it to 10. I think everything looks very nice. And now it's a great time to press Ctrl S once again to save our progress. And before we are moving on, a quick reminder. You can download this project file from my Gumroad page and support my channel if you want. And if you are serious about your career, you can invest in the Motion Bundle deal on my website, which includes all my project files, 6 premium courses, access to my community where you can win cash prizes, and a one-on-one -on -one private lesson with me. There is a crazy discount on the bundle, so make sure to check it out if you want to boost your motion design game. Alright, back to the tutorial. And before rendering this scene, I want to mention that if you want to achieve better color results in the final render, you should go to the project panel and click here to enter the project settings. Here you can change the bit depth to 16 bits per channel which will uh, increase uh, rendering times of course but it will provide a better uh, results uh, in color terms all right and now we are ready to render this uh, scene so let's head over the composition menu and then click on add to render queue here you can choose to render it as an H.264 40 Mbps file, which is a high quality MP4 file. Then click here to select the destination for the rendering. I'll navigate to the folder I created for this project and I'll create a new folder uh, named renders to render the file here. Let's name this file and then click OK and finally press enter or the render button. And with this we have finished the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I will be very happy if you like this tutorial, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment in the comment section about uh, what you would like me to create next. Thanks for watching and bye for now.